With the Resistance transports being destroyed and Skywalker's location known to Snoke, Rey tries desperately to attack him, but he easily swats her around with the Force. He orders Kylo to finally kill Rey to complete his training. Hey, Supreme Leader, you remember how you said the deed split me? Yes? Why? I know you are, but what am I? And yes, with Snoke having placed Luke's lightsaber next to him, Kylo activates it from afar and slices him in half pulling the lightsaber over so Rey can grab it. One of the other things I like about this movie, they do a lot of fun stuff with lightsaber combat. Although that does bring to mind the old joke, in a lightsaber duel, why don't they just use the force to turn off the opponent's lightsaber? But anyway, yeah, Snoke is dead. Oh no! Now we'll never learn Snoke's elaborate backstory where he was actually Darth Plagueis and has been manipulating events since episode one from behind the scenes and who oh, freaking cares! As soon as he didn't turn out to be giant size, he just became some asshole. I think Expanded Universe fans have become so used to every freaking pencil in Star Wars having novel length explanations of second by second details of their existence that they can't stand the idea that he was just some asshole. It's not Snoke's story. It's Kylo's story. It's Rey's story. Return of the Jedi was not about the Emperor any more than it was about the Bothans who died to get them that information. He's a symbol. We didn't know anything about him in Return of the Jedi other than he was just some asshole who was the real final boss because Vader became a figure who needed to be redeemed. Palpatine was a symbol for Vader's corruption and evil, something that had to be destroyed for him to turn back to the light. Here, Snoke is just a stand in for the Emperor, to trick the audience into thinking we're telling the same story over again, just like Rey thinks it'll be, when in reality, Kylo's not Vader. He's a broken, sad, angry, but powerful little boy who thinks he can just burn everything down and declare himself the winner. He didn't turn on Snoke for redemption. He turned on him because he was always gonna turn on him. That is the natural end result of Kylo's story. The story of every angry, misanthropic child with too much power and not enough morality or wisdom to use it. His only loyalty is to himself. And I know, it's equally frustrating frustrating for EU fans because they feel this kind of story was done already in the books, done differently and supposedly better, and that's okay. You don't have to like, accept, or even watch these movies if you don't want to. I mean, I sympathize. I'm a comic book fan for crying out loud. I've been there. I've seen how a reboot can take away the supposed authenticity of the previous canon. Reboots and retcons make my blood boil. But the reality is, the majority of Star Wars fans, they've only seen the movies. They will only see the movies. Ever. And you need to create a storyline for these characters that works in a movie versus something that happens in a book, which has a lot more room to expand on characterization and even multiple novels to really fully develop a character, especially since that two-hour movie also needs to give some time to the other characters in that limited time frame. So it's a lot more condensed and a lot faster. You are free to prefer one continuity over another but the filmmakers are trying to make their own story in a smaller amount of time, and they're not really thinking about, wait, how does this measure up to this character in a novel that was made decades ago? And personally, I think they did a great job with it in this movie. And I hope I have helped explain why I think they did a great job with it. But I admit, I may not have swayed you. Just as all the arguments I've heard about why people hate this movie have failed to sway me. Alrighty, time for the big fight. I freaking love this scene in the movie. A lightsaber fight against multiple skilled opponents, but no fancy footwork. Just a sword fight against a bunch of scary, cool looking bad guys with unique weaponry and emotional roaring and we care about the characters and... It, huh. It's, uh... It's only two pages. I mean, they're not bad pages, it's just... In the movie, it's, it's a few minutes long, but here it's... Just two pages. It really seems like they dispense these guys rather easily in the comic. Yeah, I know, they have to condense stuff for the adaptation, but this was a really great fight scene! It was exciting, intense, and it's... it's just two pages! Ugh, whatever. Ray tells Kylo he can order the fleet to halt their attack, but as I said, Kylo's not redeemed here. It's time to let the old things die. Kylogan's run. Kylo offers her the chance to join him. Do you want to know the truth about your parents? Ray, I am your father. 
He has her admit the truth about her parentage that even she has figured out by now. They were nobody. Somewhere, a cyclops rages that Ray's parents blinded him. Filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. They're dead in a pauper's grave in the Jakku Desert. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing. Again, using that idea of legends and stories to affect their viewpoints and manipulate each other. The idea that somehow the fact that she isn't from some friggin' lineage means she has no place in this story. Even though clearly the Force seems to disagree on that. However, he tells her this to indicate that she means something to him, and thus once again offers his hand. And while this is going on, Holdo turns the cruiser around to face the First Order fleet and prepares to jump to light speed. Rose and Finn are prepared to be executed, and finally, Rey and Kylo both try to steal Luke's lightsaber back. The First Order soon realizes what Holdo intends to do and orders their weapons on it, but it's too late. Right as Luke's lightsaber is split in half, Holdo engages the hyperdrive, and it's like shooting a massive bullet at the speed of light, killing her, but tearing apart Snoke's ship and a bunch of the Star Destroyers. I know people argue about this bit. Why don't they use that maneuver more often? Jumping to light speed doesn't work that way, etc, etc. I'm not gonna argue with that one. There are plenty of explanations about it. I just think it's freaking cool! Thanks to the Kamikaze run, Finn and Rose are alive and need to make their way to an undamaged shuttle that BB-8 has found. Phasma stands in their way and we get a brief confrontation between Finn and her, serving as the advancement of his arc as he smashes her helmet open with a vibro blade. You were always scum. And the man who didn't want to join the fight against the First Order responds thusly. Rebel scum. Phasma then falls away, presumably to her death. And as I've said before, there's a deleted scene where there's some additional moments that specifically call back to The Force Awakens and how she cowardly lowered the shield around Starkiller base to save her own ass. I get why they cut it. Length and pacing reasons for an already long movie, but damn, I wish they had kept it so we could have had some brief character bits for her other than making her the Boba Fett of the sequel trilogy. Cool looking, but mostly pointless. General Hux arrives at Snoke's throne room, Rey long gone with Snoke's escape craft and Kylo unconscious. There's a moment where Hux prepares to kill Kylo before he wakes up and then stops himself, knowing he otherwise has no chance against him. Kylo lies and says Rey killed Snoke, assuming command of the First Order to bring an end to the Resistance. Hux takes it well. The Supreme Leader is dead. Long live. Down on Crate, Rose and Finn crash their shuttle down into the Rebel base as the main door gets closed. Uh, okay, you want me to criticize this movie because... I do have a criticism here. The movie... really should be over. The major confrontations between various characters, the big climactic fights, the resolutions of most of the character arcs... They all just happened. But the movie keeps going. And I like the battle on Crate. It's a lot of cool stuff. More character moments and resolutions. The thesis of the dang film with Luke so he can drop the title. But it feels like we just had the climax of the film, and then it continues for another half hour. It's not bad at all, but shouldn't we be done? Well, the First Order definitely isn't, as they've scrounged up a large contingent of fighters and ground forces to storm the base. There's only one way in or out, the huge-ass door, but the First Order is deploying a battering ram cannon. Miniaturized Death Star tech. For God's sakes, evil empires, you have a problem! Get help for all this super weapon addiction! There really is no need for a rebellion at all. The space Nazis' economy really should collapse any day now when they keep pouring money into these damn things. Anyway, things look pretty grim. There's no other way out of the place, and the cannon will destroy the door fairly quickly. Their only chance is to try to buy some time, hope that their distress signal to their allies in the Outer Rim will bring some much-needed help. And as such, they head out in half-gutted light skimmer craft, hoping they can do some damage to the cannon. It does not go well, with several destroyed and the group only being rescued by the arrival of Chewie, Rey, and the Porgs brought from Octo in the Falcon. Wow, I think this is the first time I mentioned the Porgs. With their forces diminishing and no chance of stopping the cannon, Poe orders a retreat, having learned something from all this. But unfortunately, Finn has learned the opposite lesson, ready to sacrifice himself to stop the cannon. Even though, of course, it's pointless. There's no way in hell even colliding with the thing would actually stop a weapon like that. As such, Rose rams her speeder into his, so they both go off course. I know some people say they kind of wish Finn had sacrificed himself, but as I said, 
It would have been a pointless sacrifice. And recall that Rose lost her sister to a sacrifice that, while successful, one could argue was ultimately pointless. That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate, but by saving what we love. And they kiss. Good quote and all, but the guys who are fighting what they hate just blew down your front door. The distress call is received, but no response is made. No one is coming to help. Leia believes that the galaxy has lost all hope, but that changes with the arrival of Luke. They have a heartwarming chat as Leia thinks they can't win this fight. But as Obi-Wan had said, there are alternatives to fighting. He also admits that he can't save Kylo, Leia admitting that she knows her son is gone now. It's another point about Luke's character that people object to, how he went so far to try to save Vader, but now is saying Kylo can't be saved. Hell, it's not even just Luke's character, but they think it goes against the very spirit of Star Wars. They say it's cynical, not as full of hope as the original trilogy inspired. After all, they show that someone as evil as Vader could be redeemed. Well, if that's the case, why do people have a problem with The Force Awakens supposedly being a do-over of A New Hope? Because that sounds to me like you just wanted the same story over again. And as for everyone can be redeemed, then why doesn't anybody ever complain that Luke never tries to redeem the Emperor? Luke tried to save Kylo. Han Solo tried to save Kylo. Rey tried to save Kylo. There comes a time when you have to accept that someone can only be saved if they want to be saved. And Kylo doesn't want to be saved. So Luke walks out to face down the whole First Order with a laser sword. Set up and pay off. I love it. He also gives 3PO a wink, probably because 3PO can tell what's up. Kylo orders all their assembled forces to fire everything at him, just piling on shot after shot against him, really showing off his rage at Luke. However, when the dust settles, Luke is still standing there and casually brushes off his shoulder like a badass. Sorry, kid. This isn't over until it's just you and me. Shut up! Congratulations! You ruined the moment with your stupid narrating! Anyway, Kylo goes down to confront him personally. The other Resistance members want to go and help him, but Poe starts thinking instead of trying to be the hero, realizing that there's got to be a reason why he's doing this. There must be another way out of the place that's not on the schematics. And indeed, they follow a local crystal fox thing through the caverns until they find some rocks that have collapsed and exit out. Following that cloaked beacon established earlier, Rey lands the falcon near them and sees the rocks from the other side. Lifting rocks. What she doesn't know is that the third lesson from Luke was actually put rocks in piles. So once again, she's defiant. The resistance is dead. The war is over. And when I kill you, I will have killed the last Jedi. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. I mean, spinoff material keeps bringing up more Sith and Jedi. I don't think you really can kill them all off at this point. But no, he reiterates that the Rebellion has been reborn. The war has only just begun, and Luke will not be the last Jedi. All while Rey lifts the rocks and gets the Resistance out to the Falcon. The two fight, or rather Luke dodges every single attack he makes. I'll destroy her, and you, and all of it! No. Strike me down in anger, and I'll always be with you. Just like your father. Luke lives rent-free inside of Kylo's head at this point. Still a hermit. Kylo slashes at him, but nothing happens. Poking him with his lightsaber, it's revealed what's actually happening. Luke is projecting an image of himself across the universe, hence why he was using his old lightsaber. And thus he fades out, much to Kylo's anger. One of the criticisms of the film that especially bothers me concerning Luke is people saying that we never got to see him have some big epic lightsaber fight, didn't get to see him be the cool, badass Jedi after being a full-fledged master for so long. If you don't like the direction his character took, I get that. It's a controversial decision to make him disillusioned and bitter and stuff like that, and it's not necessarily the happy ending one would want for him. But being upset that he didn't get to have some big, epic lightsaber duel? A Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defense. Never for attack. You can't win, but there are alternatives to fighting. Force not to make one great <laughs> adventure. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> A Jedi craves not these things. Anger, fear, aggression. The dark side of the Force are they. Easily they flow. Quick to join you in a fight. Take your Jedi weapon. Use it. Strike me down with it. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the hate flow through you. 
Being a Jedi is not about being a badass. It's not about doing super cool ninja flips in the air while dual wielding lightsabers or throwing rocks at each other or Dragon Ball Z beam struggles or anything like that. Luke exemplifies the Jedi code better than his forebears, not swinging his lightsaber once at Ben, projecting an image of himself across the universe that's so effective it tricks someone as powerful as Kylo Ren and easily evades him, even very clearly getting under his skin with only a few words and guaranteeing that he will be with him forever by denying him the confrontation Ren wants so badly. I was actually really worried in the theater when we first saw Luke step out and brush off all those blaster shots, because at that point, it was just activating Force God Mode. Instead, this was the most badass, clever, and Jedi-like thing I'd ever seen. And that was so much cooler to me than any actual fight would have ever been. And just as Kylo predicted, making a projection like that from across the universe required so much effort that it kills Luke. But he dies while watching the twin suns set on Octo. And so it ends as it began, by the light of two suns before stepping into a larger world. SHUT UP! The Falcon flies off, with Rey and Kylo exchanging a final this isn't over, before they get away. We see that indeed Rey took the Jedi texts with her, although she's worried about how they don't really have much to create a rebellion with. But Leia reassures her that they've got everything they need right there. And the stories and legends continue, as in Canto Bight, the enslaved kids talk about Luke standing against the First Order. In particular, that kid from earlier wearing the Resistance ring Rose had. And so our comic ends with that kid using the Force to pull a broom over to himself and holding it like a lightsaber as he stares up into the night sky. This movie is great. Unfortunately, this comic kinda sucks. It's okay at best, but it's hurting. It's got a lot of the overall plot points and themes down, but it ruins a lot of the subtle visual storytelling bits with unnecessary narration and dialogue. Hell, I'm kind of surprised the ending scene with the kid didn't have more of Luke narrating to say, like, and now the Jedi will live on, a legend continues on, blah 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 blah, spelling it all out for us. Like I said, it's still got the overall story down, so it's why it's not really bad, but it's not great, and the artwork doesn't help. I don't know what happened, but the artwork for The Force Awakens was a lot better, especially in capturing the likenesses of everybody. This is a lot rougher. You can still tell who everyone is, but it's not as consistent, and the actual sequential storytelling is not going well in a few spots. But as for said story, it's amazing. It's a movie about failure, trying to live up to ideals and stories, and ultimately how much stories and legends can inspire us and others. All our main characters have an arc on similar themes of failure. Finn's failure led him to become dedicated to the rebel cause as opposed to looking out for himself. Rose's failure led her to realize that pointless heroic sacrifices do not win wars. Poe's failure led him to stopping and thinking about the bigger picture rather than playing hero. And Rey's failure led her to recognize that she can't play out her actions as if she's recreating a fairy tale. Luke failed both with a moment, a moment of weakness that pushed Kylo over the edge then giving up on the idea of restoring the Jedi. Characters need to be allowed to make mistakes. And they did. There was excitement, interesting ideas, characters getting challenged in new and interesting ways we hadn't seen in Star Wars movies before, and a lot of directions the story could progress. And I absolutely love it. But of course, just watch the movie. Why are we even doing comic adaptations of movies at this point? And that's it for the holiday comics for this year. From our family to yours, we want to wish you the merriest of times! In the end, we're all here because we all love Star Wars and can come together in peace and rededicate ourselves against the forces of darkness. This is the promise of the Tree of Life. Happy Life Day, my friends. Rise of Skywalker sucked! Oh god, it sucked! What the hell?!
bring me down to him. Don't get distracted, I'll go- Right away, sir. Hello my friends, please be sure to like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, and share it with others. And if you get a chance, maybe check out my Patreon.